My parents suck. I don't give a shit what my parents say. They're bloody bastards. Hey? Hey, it's Lucas. Welcome back to the Chan Chan. Now, there's nothing I love more than watching British people fight. Not physically, but verbally. I love a good UK brawl. Someone DM'd me the show called World's Strictest Parents. It's about UK parents hating their kids. And I was like, I have to watch. I'm in. I want to watch some Harry Potter kids get put in their place by their Harry Potter parents. Like all Americans, I wish I had a British accent. So watching this just gives me life. I've been to London twice and both times I developed an accent within 24 hours and people looked at me and were like Stop doing that. So I found an episode of World's Strictest Parents. It's basically an episode about two emo kids being sent to America So they won't be emo anymore. I think that's kind of what the story is. Let's look at it Well 17 year old Bex Keen life is a party Mom thinks I'm a druggie my dad thinks I'm a waster, thinks I'm gonna get pregnant. That's exactly how my parents described me as a teen. They were really worried I was gonna get knocked up. Mm -mm -mm. Get Pragers, get my egg fertilized. Every day I went to high school, my parents screamed, Don't let them fertilize your egg, Lucas! You're too young! What? Are you home tonight? I don't know. Beck some boys. She's a dog on eight. Smell my head, is it so nice? Love you. I have loads of boy mates. I shag most of them. <laughs> she has a lot of guy friends and she shags them all. I'm not exactly sure what shag means, but I'm gonna use context clues and assume it means fertilizing eggs, also known as intercourse. I like to have a bit of a drink. Where's the other bottle? Are they just drinking in the street? I love this. They're not even at a bar, they're just straight up on the brick road. I just assume all roads in England are brick. Where's the other bottle? I wanna chug it on the sidewalk. I kinda wanna be friends with this girl. Like, I know this whole show is about how she's bad and needs to be fixed, but like, can we be friends? I wanna drink on the street with you. Okay, it's time to meet the second UK emo teen. Shapes, mistakes, misfits. 16-year-old Chesden Dundee is in love with his hair. Yeah, Chesden spends a lot of time doing his hair. Uh... Wait, is this why they're putting this guy on World's Strictest Parents? Because he takes time doing his hair? Sorry, he wants to look good. Let your son straighten his hair in peace. I like how that's the first clip they show. Like, shouldn't they have started with something more intense? The description for this episode says sex, drugs, and alcohol are daily temptations for these teens, but then they lead with them being like, he spends a lot of time doing his hair. It's a problem. I might look like a twat, but at least I'm up there. You know what I mean? <laughs> Me describing myself on a daily basis. I might look like a twat, but at least I'm happy. He needs to make merch of that. It would sell like hotcakes. It don't bother me in being gay at all. But it, it's behaving like a turd. <laughs> okay, I don't know if I can't understand her accent, but did she just say I don't mind him being gay, but it's a bit like a turd? That's not what she said, right? Well, it, it's behaving like a turd. <laughs> did she just say being gay is a bit like a turd? I think I might just be stupid and can't understand her accent. We all came back here and we got really drunk and we ended up having sex with each other and we filmed it on um, my camera on my karaoke machine. <laughs> he had group sex that was filmed on a karaoke machine. Like why take the karaoke machine's innocence away like that? His poor mom probably had some friends over and was like, let's sing some Spice Girls on the karaoke machine. And they clicked the button and they're like, oh, he's doing it with a dozen people. Turn it off. That's my son. It's a bit like a turd. So now we're getting to the part where they're gonna be sent away to America, specifically to Atlanta, to live with super strict parents. The American parents are gonna fix them, I guess. I, I've never seen this show, I don't know what happens. Many of the city's population are devout Christians. Wanda is a school administrator and David is a Baptist preacher. I guess this is the family that's gonna turn these crazy teens straight. No more listening to my chemical romance, kids! Also, I love these awkward shots of them smiling at the camera. Like, how long did they make them hold that smile? It's probably one of those smiles where, like, it's starting to hurt. Like, you know when you're, like, forced to keep laughing at someone's joke and, like, the third time you fake laugh, it just, it's painful. When I say no, I mean no! I'm honestly not trying to be disrespectful, but is he spanking an evil spirit? I 
think he's spanking demons. <laughs> I, I'm not, I don't know what's going on. He's spanking something. It's important for us to be able to instill that in our children. And um, secondly, for our children to walk in obedience. Obedience to God, first and foremost, and obedient to us as their parents. Time to show these crazy UK teens some Jesus. Y'all need Jesus. We don't believe in smoking. We don't believe in drinking. We don't believe in using profanity and just things of that nature that so many people in society think are no big deal. They are a big deal to us. No smoking, drinking, or cussing? I'm out. Give me a cigarette and let me say that wasn't a British accent. As this video goes on, I'm forgetting how to do it. Give me a cigarette and let me say f What is that? I don't know what that even was supposed to be. Let's, let's just move on. How Hi, are you? Go. I'm Chaz. Chaz? I'm Dijon. Hello. David. Hello. Hi, I'm David. Hello. Nice to meet you. Hello. Hi, I'm Wanda. <laughs> <laughs> Can we have a sink right here? Excuse me? They just got to the Christian household and they already want some bloody cigarettes. And if you got more, they're gonna be empty by the time you leave. That's what we do in Atlanta. Pretty boy <laughs> means that you are... Guy. A homosexual. Uh, to put it bluntly. Yeah, I would am. That, would that be you? Yeah. Oh no, they just found out a gay is in their house. A real life gay. They better watch out, he's gonna spread gay all over the place. As a fellow gay, when I go into someone's house, I spread gay just all over him like, your table has gay on it, man. Uh, hope you don't use that glass again. It's covered in homosexual. Don't worry, I'm not gonna like bomb in your house or anything. Oh, we're not concerned about that. <laughs> oh, no, no. Did he just say, don't worry, I'm not gonna bum? in your house? He's not gonna bum in the household. What does bum mean? Does that mean sex? So they snuck some smoking on the balcony, the family smelled the smoke, and the girl's excuse for the cigarette smoke smell was that her suitcase smelled so badly of smoke that when she opened it, just like a cloud of smoke came up. And that's why their house smells like smoke. It just came from her suitcase. Well, it might be because I've opened my suitcase because half the stuff in there is like oh, okay. smoked. You sure? Oh yeah. A plus for coming up with lies on the spot. <laughs> there is no smoking inside the house. Or there is no grounds. smoking outside the house. There is no smoking in America. Should someone tell her smoking is legal in America? Under my authority, under our authority, there will be no smoking. Do you understand that? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, mom. Is dueling allowed though? Woo. What is this? A sky. Where's the rest of it? She's never seen a skirt before, apparently. Why do you need a condom? If you, like, go out, and then you have sex. So you're sexually active? Yeah. Are you married? No. Well, we believe that sex is reserved for married people. No sex before marriage in this household. So can I marry your husband then? Now they're in church learning about parts of the Bible to make them un-emo. Today's lesson is a detailed analysis of the book of Ezekiel. You guys know what an idol is? What? Do you know what an idol is? Like American Idol. <laughs> Me at Sunday school, just bringing everything back to reality TV. So on Christmas day, Jesus was born? Oh my gosh, that reminds me of Northwest being born from Kim Kardashian and Kanye West. Easter is about Jesus rising? That's sort of like Britney Spears' iconic VMAs performance where she came back with Gimme More. That's a bop. That reminds me of Easter. Run, 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 run. Up the hill, up the hill. In the, in the trees, in the trees. <sighs> they have escaped from church school. They're going to hell. So at 16, you have open gay relationships. No, not open. I don't cheat on people or anything like that. People know about it. I mean, it's not a private thing. Not like a secret. No, in the no, club kind of thing. It's just right out. In your family, everyone's okay with that? Your mom? Yeah. They are so shook that a gay person is willing to have relationships and not hide them. I smell homophobia! Wait, you're telling me you're gay and you tell people about it? People know you're gay and you're okay with that? Huh? It's almost like they're bipolar or split personalities or Dr. Jekyll and Mrs. Hi Mr. Hyde. Now she thinks they have mental illnesses. So now I guess they're going to some Christian boarding school and this happens. The pupils work in pairs to dissect unborn pigs. <laughs> what now? So they can't drink or cuss or have gay orgies with a karaoke machine. And now they gotta dissect an animal? Are we in hell? Okay, exactly, why did you walk out of class? Because I was too much for me. Why? 
And it does like turn a pig. And I felt ill. And I need some fresh air. So Bex doesn't want to dissect the pigs, which is fine. I mean, I remember in my middle school, we also did like a dissection of unborn pigs or something. And some people in the class weren't okay with it. And they were allowed to sit in the hallway while we dissected animals. Stop drinking while I'm talking to you. No, I'm... Let's go. Oh my God. Oh, Let's go. Don't touch me. You better get out of here. Don't pinch me. Let's go. Wait, did she actually pinch her? Don't pinch me. Let's go. That possibly was a pinch. I think a pinch might have occurred. Wait, in your car, then you keep pinching at me. Oh, I will pinch you. You know, I kind of respect that she just straight up admitted to pinching. Like she owned it. She's like, yeah, I did pinch. I mean, if I was a teacher and some kid came into my classroom with a camera crew and was like kind of being disrespectful, I might sneak a pinch. Like just a little pinch on the upper back, you know? Sometimes you just need to throw a subtle pinch to show who's the boss. Like, I feel like they probably teach that in college for teachers. They're like, if a student's getting out of line, sneak a pinch on the back of the neck. There's no evidence. Anyone asks you about it, you didn't do it. Doesn't leave a mark if you do it properly. A little pinch on the ear. That'll get those bitchy kids to shut up. I stand behind teachers. We gotta let you do some chores under your dad's authority. It's not my dad how many times. Under no, it's dad's. like you're trying to annoy me. You're trying to wind me up and you're being smarmy about hey, saying it hey. as well. You are not my dad. I don't care if I'm your dad. He really wants him to call him daddy. This this show has taken turns that I did not expect. Teachers pinching teens. <laughs> Dads wanting people who aren't their kids to call them daddy. Where are we? Are we in hell? I need a fag and I'm going for one. She needs a fag. Does she need me? When I visited London, I quickly realized that UK people sometimes call cigarettes fags. It's not offensive, they just call cigarettes fags. Fags are what you smoke. Can I have a fag? You know, the first time someone came up to me and said, hey, can I bum a fag? I was a little concerned, thought I might have been at the wrong place at the wrong time, but I quickly realized they meant no harm. I also went to a restaurant in London that served traditional faggots. That was the name of a dinner item. Apparently that's a food there. Meatballs or something. If you go to England, try the traditional faggots, but do not ask for them at an American Olive Garden. You might be kicked out. I've learned to be a lot more respectful. Jesus, he seems all right. I might look him up when I get back in England. <laughs> Do you reckon he's in yellow pages? We're now at the end of the episode. What a full circle moment. He now loves Jesus and might even Google him back home. When he Googles Jesus, hopefully it doesn't lead him to cameo Jesus. Or maybe, hopefully it does. Cameo Jesus is a great man. It has been an amazing honor to Parent Chesden, I was very skeptical about having an openly gay 16-year-old in my home. But I understand now that that was mainly because of my ignorance. Oh my god, she stands the gays now! She's a gay icon ally. Right after filming this, I'm sure she bought a Lady Gaga album, started recording RuPaul's Drag Race, and subscribed to the Chan Chan. He loves Jesus and she loves the gays. What a beautiful ending. Now it's the end of the episode. They're home. They're like completely changed from living with the Christian Atlanta people. Will he still have karaoke machine orgies? We don't know, but he does wash dishes now. So he did learn something. He's helping around the house. And for Bex, she's decided she is done with drugs and she's not gonna let guys sniff her hair as easily as she did before. All is well. What a beautiful show. I'm gonna have kids just to send them on this show. I think my soul is British. Well, thank you guys for coming along on this journey. Don't forget to subscribe so you never miss another video like this. Comment below how much you effing hate your parents or if you have kids, how much you effing hate your kids. And with that, I'm gonna go. Boy, bitch. Was that a good accent? See y'all, wouldn't wanna be y'all. Boy, bitch.